me, everybody. Um, today I wanted to talk about a story. A few of you have probably already heard at Temple, but I've been thinking about it in a different way lately. And I think that's kind of the beauty of Zen stories is that they're alive. So you get to re-engage and engage with them as they change in your mind and as you change over time. And so uh, Faye was kind enough to give me the reflection prompt of grief and grieving. And I sat down to think about that. Um, side note, this is also, I guess, me explaining the story is also how I come up with Dharma talks. It's usually me sitting down and thinking about something. And then at the end I go, oh, I'd like to share. So this is exactly how this works every time, usually. I don't really write them down. Um, but so I was thinking about kind of death and grieving. And I was thinking about the story of the mustard seed, which is the Buddhist version of that one, not the Christian version, um, goes as follows. There's a woman who has had a baby that has been a stillborn and she's overcome with grief. She can't handle the reality of her situation. She's wallowing, she's understandably grief stricken. And so she takes her baby and she's going outside and she hears about the Buddha. She's going through all her neighbors and trying to ask, can you help me? Can you help me? Can you bring my son back to life? Right. And so nobody can help her, but somebody says, you know, I heard the Buddha's in town. He's around. You can go find him. He might be able to help you. So she goes and she finds the Buddha and she says, can you help me bring my son back to life? And he says, I can help you, but first I need you to bring me a mustard seed from a house that has not known grief. And so she says, okay, of course. She runs, she goes back to the village. One of the Buddha's disciples next to him turns and says, how could you have said that to that woman? You know, you can't bring her son back to life. Like, how could you have promised her that you could help her? And he says, just wait, just wait. And so she goes through the village, knocking on doors and saying, hello, hello, can you help me? And they say, yes, of course, what do you need? She says, I need some mustard seeds. Do you have any? They say, of course, we'll get you some mustard seeds. She says, well, wait, has, have you seen any grief lately? Has anybody died in this house? And they go, oh, well, yes, my grandma died last year. She goes, okay, sorry, I can't. She goes to the next house. And the same thing happens. Oh, yes, my brother died. Oh, yes, my son died. And so she goes back to the Buddha, calmed a little bit, but still kind of raging in grief. And she says, thank you, I see now. And they have instead a funeral service for the child. And so that's how the story goes. And I think we can all see kind of the, the first, like on the nose, like, yes, everybody goes to grief. We're not alone in that part of it, which I think is a very beautiful message. Um, but something I've been thinking about, about that story lately, kind of differently, is the lesson in how when we give space to grief, we learn that it's not such a static thing, right? In that story, I think it's easy to say, yes, I am the old woman, I have been overcome with grief and I can get through it. But I think it's more important to me right now, at least, to see myself as everyone in the story, right? As being at some moments in grief, the old woman who's asking, or not even old, just the woman who's asking for help with her child. But the people inside the houses have all been in grief and are grieving too, right? None of them can give her the mustard seed. And so in grief, I am also them where I'm at a place where I'm able to try to help somebody, right? Who's coming to me in grief. And so I'm able to say, okay, sometimes grief is something I can make a home out of and sit in my home, right? With the other feelings that I have. And when other people are grieving, I can be the community members. And at the same time, I can be the Buddha in that moment, right? I can have moved through a particular grief and come to a place of acceptance with it and a place where I'm not bargaining with it or arguing with it. And so, I don't know, I just thought it was really interesting to sit and think about all the different ways that grief comes in waves and kind of changes and transforms over time because everybody is feeling 
the, technically the same emotion, right? Grief, it's the same state. Everybody has experienced that. But each time we experience it, it changes, even if it's over the same thing. Each time we experience it, it morphs. It feels differently. It feels bigger or smaller or deeper or more shallow, right? We get to encounter different lessons and teachings each time we give ourselves space to feel our grief and see where it's leading, right? And so I think in that story this time around, I'm thinking a lot about how to recognize that we can't always be one fixed person in the story, right? We're going to go through different waves of being the community, being the one who is being helped by the community, but that's all the same potential us. We have the potential to move through all those states, which I find hopeful when I'm feeling overwhelmed because that means I've been the person who's not overwhelmed and I will be that person again. And I can be that person on some level while I'm overwhelmed as well. So for me, that feels hopeful. Um, I hope it does for you. And then one last thing I'll share. Um, I was thinking about that kind of just 10 minutes before this started, right? I, I sit down and I let the space heater start to get warm and I just think about what I'm gonna say. And so I was thinking of that and I kind of was thinking with my eyes closed because I was thinking very hard. I opened my eyes and I looked at the tree that does not have very many leaves on it right now outside of my apartment. And it, the sky's kind of pretty right now, but it was very gray <laughs> when I was sitting down earlier and it was still pretty cold. And at first I was kind of overcome by grief just by putting myself in that state of thinking that, and I like teared up just a little bit to think, oh, the leaves are gone. Like it's truly not orange. And I wasn't even thinking of anything specific, but just with the times that we're in, I feel like I'm just constantly grieving, just anything and everything every day. And I'm grieving with folks alongside their grief. So it's, it's just a topic that I think about a lot. And so sometimes I think meditation can be an invitation to feel that grief without the attachment of something specific you're grieving, right? And so I had that moment and it felt like a little release and it wasn't from anything in particular, right? None of my problems are gone and none of my hardships are less hard, but it felt like I let go of something in that moment to see the trees kind of bare and to be sad and then to be okay and just still feel them both. And then I noticed that the few tree leaves that are still on there are still dancing. So even though the wind has picked up and some of the branches are breaking as it gets a little bit more into winter, the tree is moving into a state of enduring, but the parts of it that are dancing are still dancing as if, you know, it's spring, right? They don't know. So that's my sharing and kind of my reflection on grief today. Thanks so much for listening.